Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtzgesagt's videos. Specifically this video called Kill the Universe. It's such a cute little universe in that thumbnail. I feel bad for the poor little guy. Well, some of the ways definitely involve nuclear physics and thermodynamics. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Get right into it. The universe is going to die one day, but how? Well, it everything turns out does. our cosmic fate will be decided by a fight between two titans. The two <laughs> warriors deciding the fate of the universe. Our universe was born 14 billion years ago in the Big Bang and has been expanding ever since. For some reason, new empty space is being created out of nothing between galaxies. Now the space voids. itself is becoming bigger. Will it go on forever, or will it stop one day? Today, we think the universe is at the mercy of two cosmic demigods fighting for dominance. The first one is all the stuff in the universe. Galaxies, gas, dark matter. While they're very different, they just want to do one thing, get together. Gravity, matter basically. Matter is attracted by matter, <laughs> pulled together by gravity. And gravity also pulls on the universe as a whole, slowing the expansion that started at the Big Bang. Our second warrior is empty space. While it seems, well, empty and powerless, empty space has an intrinsic energy. We don't really have an idea what this energy is or why it's there. It's really a placeholder that fills a blank in our understanding of What's fascinating is that this empty space for really extreme distances, since a lot of the, since the expansion depends on where the observer is at, can actually be going faster than light. But we're not, we're not really technically violating anything because nothing, no thing, item with mass is expanding that fast. It's just empty space, things getting further and further apart. Again, this is just a goofy frame of reference game rather than like an actual planet going away from you that fast. The planet's not moving that fast. It's weird. Reality, but it's got a cool name, Dark Energy. <laughs> dark Energy pushes things apart, a sort of anti-gravity that accelerates the cosmic expansion. Yeah. So we have all the matter in the universe pulling in and empty space infused with dark energy pushing out. Whoever wins will kill the universe in fun ways. But who will win? It all dark depends on winning. the mysterious dark energy. Will its strength stay the same? A common assumption just because it keeps our models simple? Or will it get weaker? Or will it get more powerful over time? Whoa, that's terrifying. <laughs> One, constant dark energy, heat death. Sure. If the strength of dark energy stays constant, it will win the war. Since space is growing, matter is getting more and more diluted, like sugar in a cup being filled with more and more tea. Heat death, or another way of referring to that is death by second law of thermodynamics. But as the universe expands, new empty space is created, which brings more dark energy, which pushes everything apart even more, which creates more empty space, which makes the universe grow even faster. A feedback loop that will make the universe expand at an exponential rate. Every 12 billion years or so, it will double in diameter forever. But while dark energy is winning the war, matter is winning at least one battle. <laughs> at short distances, it can keep things together. Local galaxy bubbles can overcome the push of dark energy. In a few billion years, our local group of galaxies will merge into a gigantic ball with trillions of stars. It will soon become our last view of the cosmos. All other the weird thing is, if this happens for long enough, these distant future generation, billions and billions of years from now, in this one galaxy that's left, at least using current communication technologies and observation technologies, wouldn't be able to see the rest of the universe just because it's too far away. Now, distant future, they might have something more advanced that can, you know, teleport from one side of the universe to another. Who, who knows? So we'll see will be pushed away by the expansion. For us, it will look like the rest of the universe is rushing away, until in a few hundred billion years, we won't see other galaxies at all. Yeah. We'll be alone, surrounded by a seemingly infinite dark void. Again, unless our ability to see gets better. In about 100 trillion years, all the stars of our supergalaxy will have died out. 
All gas that could create new stars has been consumed, and no new gas can come in. The yeah, nuclear fusion in stars does not last forever. Eventually that fuel gets used up. And they mentioned trillions of years, they're referring to things like red dwarf stars that last way longer than the sun. The sun's only going to be around for another 5 billion years or so. But these stars are much smaller than the sun and are a lot more fuel efficient. Compare that to stars that are much bigger than the sun that only last a few million years. Galaxy will be dark and filled with stellar corpses. Over stellar quadrillions of corpses. years, white dwarfs and neutron stars will slowly cool until becoming truly dark, turning off the last lights of the universe. All structures, big and small, will slowly dissolve. One by one, all dead stars and planets will leave the supergalaxy, which slowly dissolves over sextillions of years. Every object will end up on its own, which means that dark energy takes over again, creating more and more empty space between everything. Objects will be so far apart that it will be as if each had a universe for itself. Yeah. Not much happens anymore until in a Google years, all black holes will have evaporated. In the end, entropy and dark energy won't stop and- And black holes evaporate via Hawking radiation. Basically near a black hole's edge, virtual particle and antiparticle configurations constantly pop in and out of existence. It's really weird. And occasionally one of them escapes, becomes real radiation, and as such it takes some of the black hole's mass energy with it. And the other bit simply falls back into the black hole. And eventually, over a very long period of time, Kurtz Gazat mentioned a Google years, all that energy is going to go away, all that mass energy in the black hole evaporates. So I guess not everything can escape a black hole. Till their job is finished. Over time spans you might as oh, well call so tiny. forever, all remaining structures might even dissolve into single particles that will be pushed away from each other by an ever-growing empty space. Imagine a whole universe with just a single lonely particle traveling through nothingness. Elemental particles. This is the final state, the true end. Now that model right there assumes that protons decay and they basically just split into, into quarks. Now if they, and again, if they don't, that would kind of throw a lot of our understanding of physics outside the window since a lot of our models assume that does, including string theory. The big freeze or heat death. Or a Ragnarok. A featureless, cold, and eternally expanding universe. Nothing will ever be able to happen again. Forever. Forever. Ooh, well, that was a bummer. What else could happen? <laughs> Two, increasing dark energy. Big rip. What if dark energy gets stronger? In this case, empty space won't just win over matter, it will literally rip it to pieces. It so if you didn't think it was strong enough, it's just kind of funny that it could be it could be even stronger. Because again, while it showed it getting stronger, it really had the same rate because it's more of it's just gonna keep expanding us out at that same rate. So this this is interesting. The big freeze scenario, matter lost the war but won some battles. But here, matter wins nothing. Yeah. Dark energy is growing stronger over time, Port gravity. overcoming the pull of gravity and creating new empty space at smaller and smaller distances. In this scenario, things will escalate quickly. It could start as early as 20 billion years from now. First, dark energy will create That's empty quick. space between individual galaxies. That's super quick considering how old the universe gets in the big freeze scenario upwards of a Google or 10 to the 100th years. Yeah, this universe ain't gonna last very long comparatively. And by that logic, our universe, if, if this happens, our universe is already approaching middle age. Our galaxy will leave its local cluster and begin to drift alone in a rapidly inflating and ever darker cosmos. Some billion years later, empty space starts to push between individual yeah. stars, dissolving the galaxy. If you live on a planet in a star system, the night sky will start looking sad and gloomy, as other stars are pushed too far away to be seen. Now this is assuming that it increases and it increases exponentially too, so you're going to start to see crazy stuff. Everything becomes nuclear fuel, and not in a good way. A few million years after the sky turns dark, dark energy not starts really. to create <laughs> empty space inside star systems. Your planet is pushed away from its star, and all life in the universe freezes to death. Yeah. There's not much time left, as a few months later, dark energy is creating empty space inside solid objects. Stars, your neutral body. stars, planets, asteroids, 
everything solid is being ripped into pieces. If you're on a spaceship, you only have a short time before you are ripped apart. And like they said, it's going to start with all the big stuff first, like galaxies, and then, yeah, it's going to go quick when it, by the time it gets to solar systems, then people, cells, subatomic particles. Half an hour later, even atoms are destroyed as new space is being created so furiously that electrons and nuclei are separated. Now the universe has just a fraction of a second left. I made a joke earlier, this, this is not fission. This is something getting pulled apart from everything. Fission is fairly controlled from like a neutron hitting something and splitting it into two well, pretty well-defined products. But this, something's not being split into here. Something is just being pulled into bits and pieces. And it happens quite fast, even for nuclear reaction speed. So yeah, the, the universe is just gonna go away pretty quick. In this final moment, only dying black holes remain drained and defeated by dark energy. They're tiny, septillions of times smaller than an atom, They'll and they themselves explode really quick. the power of a trillion supernovae in a trillionth of an octillionth of a second. Yeah, so that's the thing about Hawking, about Hawking radiation. For supermassive black holes, it's on the order of 10 to the 100th years, but for the, like, the little tiny micro ones, they don't last very long at all. It's a Big, it's a function that heavily depends on the mass of the object. And if the mass of the object is tiny, then black holes won't last very long. Finally, the very fabric of reality is torn to its core, obliterating space-time itself. The Big Rip. Space there and time goes. have lost their meanings, making it impossible to predict what will happen next. Whew. Three, decreasing dark energy. There we go. Big crunch. Give matter a chance. Four, matter. But there is one scenario where it wins. If the strength of dark energy decreases with time, and if this reduction is strong enough, the pull of gravity will win, and there you all go, the matter. things in existence will move towards each other, unfortunately making the universe collapse into itself. Basically no a black hole. No one knows when this might begin, but it could be as soon as a few hundred million years. What will it look like? That? Uh I wasn't actually expecting it to be faster than the big rip, though I guess these are various scenarios. Depends how fast it decreases, right? If it decreases exponentially. Like, as the universe begins to contract over billions of years, galaxies and galaxy clusters approach each other until they eventually collide. They're mostly made of empty space, so a collision is like and a everything is going to look of like it's clouds. coming towards you. At any rate, <laughs> first galaxies and later individual stars get closer and closer. As the universe goes on collapsing, you might worry about stars and planets eventually crashing against each other. This will happen, but it's not your worst problem. If space yeah. itself shrinks, this also concentrates all the radiation emitted in the past by all the stars, supernovae, and quasars that ever existed. Now, empty space is... You're going to get a lot of dose and a lot of heat. You thought space was a radiologically dangerous environment, and it really is. Astronauts get more dose than radiation workers. This is going to turn that up to ridiculous levels. Filled with radiation, the dark nothing between stars is heating up, making life unpleasant and then impossible as planets just burn. Slowly at first, then rapidly, space gets as hot as it was after the Big Bang. Stars are pretty hot, but now the space around them is hotter. They're literally boiled from the outside. As the universe collapses into itself, all funny. galaxies and all stars merge into a single ball of hot plasma. The Big Crunch is complete. From here on, there are two possibilities. Either the universe will collapse completely into a singularity, a so point of zero hole. size and infinite density without space and time, kind of. the way it might have been before the Big Bang. Or the universe could bounce back, restarting the cosmic expansion, creating a new baby universe. Somewhat poetic, really. Everything died, but everything is reborn. Interesting. I mean, I guess it could. So in that case, you know, there would be just a teeny enough bit of dark energy left to kind of start the cycle over again. Or are they talking about something else? But to be clear, we have zero evidence that this has happened before or will in the future. Yeah. So what will happen? Most scientists think that dark energy will stay constant. So the likely fate of the universe is heat death, eternal cold, and utter boredom. 
I wonder how much of that is based on empirical evidence versus how much it's, it's just the simples, the simplest model to work with, and we're just using Occam's razor on it. Which seems I'm not a scientist. Sad, I don't actually know. But has know. a huge upside. In this scenario, we get to have the universe for the longest. It gives us trillions of years to expand, jump from star to star, maybe even from galaxy to galaxy. We might even find a way maybe to keep consciousness universe, around forever. Universe to universe. We don't know. So we just idea. have to wait and see, and make the most of the amazing universe we have right now. I think dark energy and, uh, and matter should just cuddle or something. And I guess this one didn't talk about the whole false vacuum, random quantum fluctuation that causes infinitely expanding depth sphere to engulf everything and change all aspects of physics. I think Kurtz Gazat talked about that in another video. I'll uh, pin that one down below. But of those three, which one do you think is more likely? Or it's entirely possible they're all completely wrong. I mean, again, like if the assumption that, like if protons turn out to not be able to decay, that would throw, that would throw a few things out the window. And just a whole bunch of physics that we just still don't understand yet. I always love the way Kurtz Gazat explains it too, with their little cuddly universe thumbnail. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.